welcome at the, the second official area robotics working group <laughs> or just the first may the first may uh, meeting which is going to be a scientific meeting we're going to have a presentation later and so what you can see very quickly here in the agenda we're going to have a first presentation about um, aerostack 2 by miguel from uh, madrid university uh, he can uh, introduce uh, his lab and himself a bit further then just uh, of course like a q a discussion uh, i of course expect everybody that has read have re read the paper of course right <laughs> no but uh, of course you can also ask the question based on the presentation itself um and also uh perhaps it would be handy to have a topic selection for the developer meeting in two weeks which is on the 24th of may also on a wednesday same time should be on the community uh, on the community calendar of ross all right so i'm just going to close my slides and you can share yours miguel okay if it works perfect okay so you can see yeah the presentation uh, okay so uh, hello everybody i'm miguel fernandez i came from the Polytechnical University of Madrid, concretely in the Computer Vision and Aerial Robotics Group. And I'm going to present our, our last year's work regarding the Aerostack 2 framework, which is like a ROS2 framework for developing uh, aerial robotic systems. So yeah, in the beginning, uh, want to know what is this Aerostack? It's an open source software framework and, and as, as I said, it's it's designed for for easing the development of multi-robot aerial system, and it's based on on ROS2. This is the an evolution of our former uh, software framework that was uh, Aerostack, and this framework has been developed and used in inside our group since uh, uh, 2015. And we have do uh, we have done multiple uh industrial projects uh, scientific publications and and we won some competitions using this 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 former this former framework so to to begin to begin to with with my presentation i want like to say what is our mission with this framework and our main goal is to ease the development of autonomous aerial robotic systems um, we want to uh, to have a framework that is suitable not only for academic uh, applications but also to to industrial ones, and we would love to to have like a ROS2 community and uh, be able to join forces with other people in order to uh, create a common framework. Like for example, navigation to do uh, in uh, does into the the ground robot. Uh, field or for example move it for controlling uh, robotic arms our, our intention is to gather all the knowledge of of like of people developing aerial robotics and be able to join all forces together to to improve the 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 common uh, development of of aerial robotics in in ROS2 and some of our main features of of our framework are related with like it's a full modular framework you can use it in as we are going to see later from multiple layers or just pick or grab the things that you are interested into uh, it's platform agnostic which means that it doesn't uh, like it's not uh, tightly coupled if you are using for example a px4 of a crazy flight or other uh, aerial platform uh, we use uh, a lot of plugins in order to make it the easier to change the behavior or, or some or some components of, of our framework, we uh, we have designed our, our missions to be based on on behaviors, which is uh, a tool that it's widely used in in the ROS and in the robotics community, and we have multiple high levels APIs in order to to ease the, the monitoring and the creation of different missions. So if you want to see how is this architectural design from, 
bottom to top in the lowest level we have just the middleware which is uh, ROS2, Linux and some public libraries and uh, we connect we will going to connect all our our processes using ROS2 uh, messages from topics or from actions or, or services and on top of that we have what we call the platform and sensor interfaces these are in charge of interacting with the, the concrete platform, for example, the PX4, DJI's, or, or Crazy Flight uh, platform, and with other sensors such as a USB camera or the real sense uh, cameras or other sensors that you're willing to use in your, your application. Uh, on top of these platforms, we build what we call the basic robotics function, which are the minimum like capabilities that we want our, our aerial robot to have in order just to be able to fly and to stay stable and do some uh, like super basic things. And here we can like draw a, a line, a hard line, because from here to bottom, we we have what we call the low level and from here to the top we have more a deliberative layer in which we have these behaviors which is what we want the the drone to be doing and we can uh, connect these behaviors in order to create missions using or our python api or behavior trees or or for example our web uh, graphical user interface and we combine all together for make some concrete applications for example uh, going to a competition or doing a photovoltaic inspection or just a concrete application. So uh, if we go from the bottom, one of our, uh, our first abstraction is what we call robot. This robot is composed by the aerial platform, which is the interface with the, with the, with the, with the drone itself, with the hardware. And uh, the basic robotic functions, such as the controller of the state estimation that uh, allows the, the drone to fly and will be commanded using uh, some mission level, level logic. And we have like an emergency channel that can uh, access to different levels uh, of these layers, depending on how is the severity or, of, or the emergency that you are willing to, to tackle. So if we want to dig a little bit into, for example, what is an aerial platform. Uh, an aerial platform is this abstraction in which we will have our hardware with all their specific platform interface. It, it's, it doesn't have to be uh, using ROS, for example. You can use another libraries or all the, the, the code that you have that you want or other sensors that you are willing to, to integrate into into the, the platform. And this is going to translate all these platform specific uh, language into our uh, general aerostack uh, actuator commands, uh, sensor measurements, or other like more low level actions such as uh, arming or going into an offboard mode or uh, some, some kind of, of, of queries that you want to do to the, to the aerial platform. And um, as, as it's shown in, in this diagram, we interact with this aerial platform with the motion controller, of course, and, and the state estimator. And these are basic robotic functions. All our uh, basic robotic functions uh, have been implemented with the same structure. It has some inputs that are going to be like adapted in order to be congruent for all uh, the, concrete, the concrete implementations. For example, in the case of our controller, we want to have all our, our reference in the same uh, reference uh, coordinate system. So sometimes we have to use some transformations in order to have it all in the same uh, frame of reference. Or for the output in a controller, sometimes we want to have it some uh, uh, the same we have want to have them in a in a frame of reference that is congruent with the rest of the 
of the system. So this adaptation has to be done. Then we can have multiple fl function plugins, which are actual implementations. For example, we can have a PID controller. We can have an MPC controller. We can have a differential flatness based controller. And all these different controllers would be plugins that are handled using like this plugin selector, which can be more or less intelligent depending on what application do we do we want for example in the most basic case you just say okay use this pid plugin because it's it's enough for my application and i don't want to go for nothing more more uh, expensive computation for example and with this we have covered what we call the the robot it's the basic uh, capabilities that our stack has in order to be able to control some some drone or some aerial platform but at the end what we want is to do uh, some mission so in order to have the to, to specify a mission we created uh, behaviors which are like rows to actions but we had extended it in order to support further capabilities for example if you want to Post uh, go to, for example, if you use like traditional ROS two actions, this won't be possible. You you have just to cancel it, and we added these 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 extra capabilities, but we are still be um, compatible with the with the normal ROS two action. So, if you just want to use as ROS two normal actions, you will be able to do it, but you cannot do, for example. Uh, these extra capabilities and the idea of these behaviors is that uh, it provides a meaningful language for uh, defining missions that can be easily understood for everyone with uh, terms such as takeoff or going to some points or following a trajectory or even uh, behaviors that are not specifically uh, attached to a goal for example you can have a behavior that it's detect uh, arucos and it's going to be searching for 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 these arucos until someone uh, tells the behavior to stop it's not like a goal base uh, like for example the takeoff which has a, a concrete beginning and a concrete end and we can create complex behavior just uh, like aggregating or or making compositions which is we with is this with more small behaviors and these um, uh, behaviors are management are managed using like two different functions one it's like what we call the execution monitoring and it's the one that will handle the the external uh, queries for activating or modifying or stopping a, a behavior that are are going to be sent by the mission planner and it has this uh, task ref refinement which it's going just it's going to to run the 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 actual implementations or the code that you need for for doing this behavior but it also can uh, activate or deactivate or uh, talk with other robot behaviors in order to create this complex behavior that that we've been talking about and in in this uh, in this graph we can see how this task uh, interacts with our basic aerial functions that at the end uh, goes through this uh, standard ROS2 data channel that the aerial platform is going to to listen to it and interact with the with the with the hardware um, as I said in the in the beginning one hour of our like um, our, our decisions during the development of the of the framework is try to make things uh, plugin oriented in order to be able to switch different implementations of the same method in an easy way but also to be able to just uh, pick the source code for example through binaries that we are trying to to obtain to in, enable to create these binaries for for the stack framework and if you just want to build your own controller you can have only the source code of your controller 
of your plugin and 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 connect it you don't have to actually compile and, and download all the the source code of of aerostack which for example for developing in 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 very concrete fields i think that's that's useful and this also helps with um with maintaining some meta capabilities that our framework has for example as i said uh, before uh, this controller that can handle multiple reference and, and coordinate systems, these meta capabilities can be provided to all the, con the controller plugins uh, without uh, making the, the developer to take care about this. Or for example, in the state estimator, the TF3 is created on top of each plugin. So the person who are writing this new plugin doesn't have to take care about how this TF3 is is generated and for the mission planning we have a multiple a mission interface like the first and the easier one it's a python api that as you can see an example of how this code uh, can be read is it's super easy to to understand we have of course the behavior tree and uh, as we are all, also developing some application outdoors, uh, we found that it's it's easier to plan or to, or to define or to to create some outdoors mission using like some kind of graphical user interface, such as uh, uh, the one that Kuround Control uses. But in our case, we want to have it, it like more integrated into our framework, and we wanted to make it web based in order in order to be able to run it for example from a tablet or from different uh, navigators and don't uh, having to to be like constrained to a specific uh, operative system or or anything like like this in terms of which simulators we are working and, and are supported we have ignition gazebo and we can integrate it with Flightmare if we need some more photorealistic uh, uh, capabilities. We have, for example, here an example of a photovoltaic power plant um, in which we, we needed to, to have better um, photorealistic in the images that the camera was, was acquiring. And as I said uh, before, as the the framework is platform agnostic uh, the whole framework doesn't know if it's running on simulation or if it's running on real platforms and nowadays we are supporting uh, Telorise, crazy flight px4 in which we are moving from the rtps um, in, um, like uh, integration to the micro dds one and we have also this uh, dgi matrix series we are working with the OSDK, but we are moving into the PSDK too in order to support the, the next uh, models too. And with all this combination, we can create like multi-purpose applications such as indoor laboratory experiments or some indoor competitions, but also we can work in outdoor with, for example, aerial inspection missions or uh, a package delivery or oh, a package delivery one and now i have some videos like trying to to show all these this these capabilities for example here we have two crazy flights i don't know if you are able to to see that are working coordinately in order to pass through through some through some gates or here in this uh, video we can see like a PX4 that it's uh, looking the the Arucos is generating a trajectory that's passed through through the gates and then it's go, it's uh, going through through this trajectory and if the the position of the Aruco change the trajectory is regenerated in order to be able to 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 pass successfully through through the gates. Other, um, other feature of, of, of our framework is the capability of um, 
write swarm missions and simulated them before in in for example in ignition and then we can just move whenever we know that the mission is is co is correct uh, we can move into real operation we have here three crazy flights and we can see how we can uh, create the mission and what it's super cool is that uh, the the aerostack framework the all the the controller the the mission and all these things doesn't know if they are actually working with a real platform or with a simulated one what makes the sim to real um, uh, steps uh, super easy and um, uh, Miguel, just a very yeah. quick comment. Um, I don't know if anybody else is, is experiencing this, but your video is a bit choppy. Um, uh, but if you can maybe um, share some of the, the, the links afterwards, like in the chat or something like that, or later in yeah. the... Yeah. But it's like, okay. I, I can follow it approximately, but it, it kind of goes like this. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, all our videos are in, in Vimeo, are in YouTube, in the CVAR account, I will put it like in the chat uh, afterwards. I, I hope that you can just see if I stop the, the video, what I'm, this video, you can see like a behavior tree and how the, the drone is performing the mission and you can follow in it using this, this group um, interface. And this is how our our web graphical user interface looks like you have uh, um, a georeference map and then you can just uh, like by clicking and grabbing you can decide which is the takeoff point which way points you want each uav to go and it can also uh, generate the uh, um, a path combining the two uav so you don't have to specify what uh, path you want each uav to go you just say the total area that you are that you want to to go through and and then it's going to divide it using some parameters uh, accordingly to the number of uavs that you have avail available and yeah, we have simulated all these things and you can see the, the cameras and and some data that it's uh, uh, show into uh, about the, the the mission. You can see it in real time in the in the application. I have a question. Is this a subdivision of the mission area? Is that done in the in the planning software before you upload the mission to the drone? Uh, yeah, it's done before the the applying the mission to the drone. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thanks. And one of our, of our last works has been uh, related with uh, windmill inspections, and and here we wanted to show just uh, a simulation in in Gazebo in which the the objective of the drone is to to follow the the center of the of the windmill in order to to be able to follow the the blades uh, um, without taking care about which angle this this windmill this windmill has. Um, all our we have a documentation a complete or we are working on making it the best we can but we have some some things documented on on this irostack2.github.io we have of course our github repository and uh, the paper that uh, Kimberly and, and Ramon had posted on on bros discourse uh, if you want to have like further uh, information or, or or more resources and it's been uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Kimberly and, and Ramon, for letting me present my my work in these meetings. And I'm open to hear all of, of our questions.
Yes, thanks, Miguel. Um, yeah, I guess we already have the first question. Go for it. I can. Yeah, to you, Tim. We uh, did you uh, raise a hand? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry, it was just a misclick. I just wanted to say, uh, great presentation, Miguel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't really have a question. I think I will need to deep, uh, um, I mean, go deep in your code to see how you did all of that. And maybe if I can add something, um, how many are you working on this project? And um, nowadays, we are uh, four uh, people working actively on 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 the development of of this but we have more we are adding more people for example we have some uh, master students on um, people that uh, from other universities that are beginning to to do some some things with with this framework so our idea is that it it grows and the community gets gets bigger in order to to fulfill all, all the the things that we want to to include into this framework all right well thank you for the presentation again thank you i guess um i perhaps have a first uh a first uh question about safety safety systems because uh saw us in the paper that there are a couple of like uh fail safe mechanisms that are an error stack um, but there's also quite a lot of emergency systems integrated into like the big four and dgi as well yeah. um so what does error stack kind of count as a priority like if for instance one of the fail safe of a big four other pilot it gets gets triggered let's say and it needs to land is error stack going to be aware of such a such a happening or We'll try mm. to intervene. Nowadays, we are like going from, I mean, if the autopilot has to launch their fail safe, it's, it, it's because Aerostack hasn't been able to do it properly. So yeah, of, of course, we should rely on, on what the, this autopilot uh, do. But nowadays, we are having some issues with with this PX4 because they have changed a lot of things in these months, um, and nowadays we are we are not. Uh, I mean, if the control mode goes from from offboard, loses from offboard, then uh, Irosta would not try to recover it because we consider that if this happens, maybe because we had some issues with the manual mode and the offboard mode and some things with the RC. Uh, we don't want the, the human pilot to be uh, disrupted by what Aerostack are going to send to the autopilot if he actually had to take the manual mode, for example, in the worst case. Mm -hmm. And so it's I something that oh, sorry. we want to, to work more on this, but in, for example, in the IMAF competition, what we did with this emergency channel is having like this geofencing that we can configure easily than going into the autopilot because we can do it in mission specification and if if this failed then the the hail fence that we had in the autopilot should uh, should take the control yeah it's just letting you know the crazy flies overhauling their their entire safety system so yeah, I've been looking at the post that you have po uh, like posted on 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 your blog about safety mm -hmm. things. Yeah, and it looked quite interesting. One yeah, one thing that uh, we use, mm -hmm. for example, is whenever one we have some drone that are doing some weird things. For example, with the mocha because the marker is too small and some sometimes they get lost. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, for example, one kill switch that affects all the crazy flights from just into our 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 interface in order to make it like easier um, or faster just to say okay if something is going wrong we just want this crazy flight to land for example or to if it's not possible to to do to do an emergency stop all right yeah i think those kinds of things are not going to change through the uh, at least in our like in the in the crazy flight uh, like firmware that, that that behavior will be exactly the same <laughs> but well at least we're trying 
let us know if it's not. But uh, <laughs> um, anybody else has uh, any questions about the presentation? Any more questions? Can I ask another question? <laughs> then I uh, I uh, noticed that uh, at least uh, it's going to be some questions about the paper itself. Um, I like I'm quite happy to see that you guys are reusing quite a lot of like you know the, the existing ROS ROS messages and like I saw groups there. So like <laughs> no, don't make your own behavior tree. Um, but uh, for instance, like in terms of like uh, UFV based ROS messages, what what do you think is still missing? What we've done is that we try to use, for example, the, the type of messages. We use the one that are in the ROS rep in for the vast majority of our communication uh, messages. But for example, as we have like learned from the previous Aerostack framework, uh, there are some some naming that can be like for example in the case of the controller you can have posts that are into the the like it's a, a reference you want for example a post reference but in the case of px4 or or i think that crazy flight 2 you can just send a post to the directly to the platform so how do we like differentiate between these two messages if we just name them like post or something like this that i have seen that it's what it's happening in some cases of the of the uh, ross rep uh, we decided to be like more literal with the names and try to extend them a little in order that anyone that just see the name of the topic has to know where this is going to to act and who is creating this topic and which is the the end point or something like in a more uh, like fast way but some of the the things that are like uh, we use the same as the as the ross rep says and in terms of of the tf3 and the uh, frames we use the ross rep recommendations too um and yeah, I don't know exactly what things are the ones that I would say that are not being here or not, because each framework tend to do their things are their own. And as and as far as I know, there hasn't be like a lot of people really uh, using these conventions. So yeah, we we go with the thing that worked the best for us and we try to to think and to see if we are doing something that can be done as the standard says and for us it's okay to we we will use the thing that is in the standard but we we were not super light uh, coupled with uh, what it said all right yes thanks yeah i guess like you know if the standard is not uh, up to date we can update this of course so uh yeah that's why we're doing the the working group hopefully uh we'll get to that point uh but uh, um i guess like another like a, you you had also really nice overview in your paper as well um so i already added a couple of these uh these autonomy stacks on the the github ross aerial mm -hmm. um but <laughs> i might uh i might copy <laughs> copy the papers i'll reference to it of course uh in a nice table uh i just have like a i just want to make a small comment i would say uh but i think it will be a very good discussion point uh, in general uh, about uh open source <laughs> namely mm -hmm. um because like i like you know i come from academia of course like you know uh, that's kind of also where we know each other from uh, and i had a very wrong idea about what an open source definition actually is um, I felt like anybody that just shows their code already in the open is open source. But unfortunately, um, there's a couple of autonomy stacks on there. Not Aerostack. Aerostack is that's, that's using the right license. But for instance, uh, Agalicious and uh, Kuma Robotics, they're not using a completely open source license. 
for their code. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. just uh, just as kind of a fact, um, I can share you the the definition of uh, open source, at least according to the open source uh, initiative. Um, because I guess like the thing is that yes, they, they present their codes, but they are putting restrictions on who yeah. can use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like yeah. It, you have a bit of people that um, like from the open uh, yeah that are very strict on that and it's like you're not allowed to call it open source. Although I know that Achillesius have that on their website, open hardware and open source. Uh, open hardware is even more restrictive. As I I don't know if I'm. Uh, <laughs> If that's correct, uh, Ramon, you're probably a bit more uh, familiar with the the thing, but yeah. On the other hand, yeah, I, d I don't know like how what they called elsewhere. Like if you if you show show the code, but you put restrictions to what people can use, um, is there a different name for that than open source, or is there no name for that? I think that's a gray area right now. Um, to me, like open source is just any permissive license that lets you use and share the code. But there's a lot of different definitions from different organizations that don't mm -hmm. agree with each other too much. But in general, mm -hmm. uh, I think having a common license that you see out there that is not modified, um, like a GPL, BSD, and Apache and MIT, um, there's a lot of open source projects out there that adopt that and then add a paragraph last, last that says, this code can only be run on this hardware and it's their hardware that they sell. So that's already not um, openly available for everyone, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah, it's yeah. also for instance, like the licenses of what's the actual license in Kumar, I think was mostly the, uh, the parts that it's uh, non-commercial personal use and academic only, um, I think for both. And that is already that that is already like putting some kind of restriction on it that companies cannot use it uh, for their work, for instance. And yeah, so I guess that's that is kind of like, yeah. But at least like I know the the, the link I shared in the chat, that is the, the one that I been <laughs> sent to by my, co by my other colleague who's very passionate about open source. Um, so, but it's it's much to much to learn about all of these uh, kinds of things. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll think... have a look and and change it because, as as I said, like it's a preprint. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have it like in order that people can mm -hmm. get like a deeper understanding about what we're going to, what we are willing with this framework, and and yeah, all these things has to be like modified before creating like the sending into a journal or or anything. yeah exactly so, yeah. so now, if, if you need to still have the chance to then uh, perhaps just uh, take a look at this one but uh, like uh, ramon said there might be there are other um yeah organizations out there but this this is a pretty big one um and perhaps like it would be already okay if like you know you have something kind of open source but you put like an asterisk there and it's like okay, yeah. yeah it's uh, for yeah. instance, this is a more restrictive license than the, for instance, the open source initiative uh, agrees on. Because yeah, like obviously, like you know, if if in academia they call it open source, the, the Edulicious paper they call it open source, and it's been was published yeah. in Re uh, Science Robotics, and that was like you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> very I mean. big there. So yeah, I don't know if somebody came to them and was like, hey, hello. It's like it's not a crime to call it open source. It's just yeah like let the, let's be clear there's no legal repercussions of calling something that's open source that's actually not open source but all right but i uh it was a very good presentation uh, miguel uh so that was very nice to uh um, thank you to hear um so let me um i'll just share my um slides again uh just to A moment. Trying to finalize this meeting. Yes. All right. Um, so I was uh, thinking about perhaps like selecting a uh, topic for the next developer meeting. Um, but like, if any, I, I just prepared a poll 
um, before the meeting started. So I'll just launch that right now. Uh, launch. I think everybody can see. And then uh, the, these are just like a list of topics that are currently on Arial. Um, the Ross Arial uh, GitHub page. And uh, yeah, if uh, if you think that that was actually something else that uh, you would like to discuss for the next technical meeting, then. Uh, but I guess like you know, it's just going to be the general topic. So I'll prepare a presentation or I'll ask for some information about from other people as well um, for proper presentation. So you can go ahead and vote. Are you going to be making a poll, or should we just put it in chat? Um, oh, I already started the poll. Can't you see it? I I don't see it. Yeah, you have to click on the next. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I can on, yeah. on the bottom. One. Yeah, there's supposed to be like the the poll within Google Meet. So if you don't see it, just click. Yeah, it's weird because last time I think Hangout did notify everyone that there was a poll. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I thought as well. While people are like voting, I would like to make one question to Ramon. Mm -hmm. And it's if you are thinking about the distributing the binaries of the PX4 messages uh, in order to be easier to use this in like into the ROS packages, because nowadays we are having like in order to create our binaries, we have to have the PX4 like aside in no building because of this dependencies with these px4 messages and if this should is this could be like uh, into the ros ecosystem and be installed with ros dep and all these things would be super good and i didn't know if you were thinking about about something like about this actually no we we weren't thinking about it but if there's a need for this yes we can do that maybe we can find a way to export uh, output those or export those matching for the release or uh, I don't know we can discuss that yeah definitely okay thank you yeah and so like, we... maybe oh. you should join one of our meetings soon I was gonna wait until we end up recording to say that but <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have seven votes in so uh, I don't see anything coming up um, so make sure you put in your vote. Okay, I will say three, two, one, done. End the poll. Show everybody the results. All right, so I think everybody can ever see this results, but... Um, oh, Ryan uh, said that it might be interesting to also discuss about planning on 3D. Um, yes, very good. I will add that topic at least for for the next time for for uh, voting on them they because i just literally copied the copy this from the from the github uh, ross but anybody can add more topics to to the github repository as well i think yeah the the aerial landscape um so currently we have tutorials and education that has the most uh, votes for now so by means of the demo democracy <laughs> We will talk about the terrorist and education right now. So, like, what is missing? Um, what can be done? I guess we, we'll uh, we'll know until we get there. <laughs> but uh, we can prepare a couple of things, and maybe we can have share also some plans. What's happening from PX4 of the crazy fly part? But uh, we will do a bit of research as well. So um, yeah, so that means is that the next uh, meeting, which is going to be like the the more the developer. Technical meeting, um, which will be on Wednesday, 24th of May, also 2 p.m. UTC, which is 4 p.m. Central European time or 7 a.m. on the, the West Coast. Um, but uh, please check the community, um, the Ross community calendar for that. And also the link um, of the Ross Aerial uh, community. Don't forget to add yourself as a member. If you would like that on the community uh, repository, read me. 
um, yeah, and the next time, like I said, is going to be about, we're going to discuss about how to improve tutorials and education. And I will stop the recording now.